Hi friends, so you are into this course on uh, risk-based engineering and uh, the topic is human reliability and uh, two lectures are over where we have given the background, one is introduction and another one is background of this human reliability technique. It was just to introduce you to the subject um, and then uh, a very detailed review of available human reliability techniques was also made. Uh, why we did that was because it is important if you are developing a new technology and of late there is a need uh, to develop new and advanced technologies uh, even for human reliability. Um, the one reason was there were some limitation of the old approaches they were developed in 83, 84, early 80s and all. And the second thing was now advanced tools and methods that are available and we can really uh, develop improved human reliability technology. Here the subject is uh, uh, CQB approach that, uh, that uh, we are developing at uh, rather we developed at BRC and some phase one is over. So uh, today uh, we will discuss the most used and popular approach uh, that is uh, THERP technique for human error rate prediction. Uh, this was, is developed in uh, US, uh, is basically meant to meant for nuclear power plant and um, we will see the major feature of this approach in uh, next uh, 20, 20, 20, 20 to 25 minutes and uh, what insights we draw from there that also we will discuss. So let us uh, start the lecture. So uh, outline of this lecture is like first we will uh, have insights from the uh, review, uh, what uh, previous review and all. So we definitely uh, so far uh, we have learned some lesson and uh, uh, for this technique especially uh, we will discuss the taxonomy and the major aspect of taxonomy because we cannot discuss everything in detail. Uh, then why this technique was required? It was basically meant for probabilistic risk assessment because in probabilistic risk assessment uh, data and model they are basically handling quantitative inputs. So for human reliability also quantitative input was required and this THERP uh, technique, uh, the technique for human error rate prediction I will be using the brief uh, term that is THERP. So, and then procedural aspect, um, we will we'll discuss in one slide or whatever and then we will see, uh, focus on THERP only. Uh, that is what, what is this technique, uh, what is the basic feature of this technique, lookup table, uh, table, performance shaping factors, then uncertainty characterization uh, curve, uh, that is THERP curve, uh, median value and all that, that we will be discussing. And uh, yeah, and uh, then comment and experience. So, what is the experience of using this approach? Um, I, I myself have uh, used this approach, uh, Threadbare, uh, in details, and um, we have some comments on this actually. Uh, now, the broad feature of this uh, technomy, uh, taxonomy uh, are like this. Um, it has got a category called mistakes, slips and laps. Slip and laps, oblique laps, they are used. Um, and they are at one level. Uh, they are considered as uh, root also sometime uh, for, and form the major category actually. Now the, uh, the errors, human error in uh, THERP, they are external and internal, two categories of error. And then their causes, we'll discuss in brief. Um, so basically there are two external causes that error of commission and error of omission. Uh, these are basically as part of uh, procedure we are carrying out or we do a, some uh, maintenance job or operational job in control room setup. So uh, external error. Internal means internal or internal means uh, person specific. So. Uh, whether we are able to, because for any failure or any event, detection is the first. Uh, if we don't detect, it's a problem. And that's how in many uh, uh, HR inventory, uh, this event forms the first heading, detection of a 
situation then one has to interpret so interpretation and then finally diagnosis and once the diagnosis is done then decision making so this sometimes it happens in a split second or this takes some time so though those aspects will be discussing because third provides the look up tables where performance shaping factors uh, and all those things can be used and the causes finally we have to con as i was mentioning in my previous lecture attention failure distraction failure memory lapse uh, or recall error so these type of things uh, then uh, the fundamentals of uh, uh, causes of human error uh, the then some the, it could be like uh, which translates into performance shape, uh, shaping factors the task complexity all the jobs do not have the uh, uh, same level of complexity some are very simple some are very complex and if i to talk in terms of uh, um, the cognitive factors uh, it could be skill based rule based or knowledge based knowledge based means it requires a lot of backup information backup diagnostics to come to a decision skill based jobs is routine jobs you know and then rule based jobs are we have to uh, do some uh, some uh, rule analysis if this is this then what this if this is like this if, so uh, then that analysis which happens at the mental level and uh, then a per, uh, then a person takes a decision now all these things what it means is in a, in a normal scenario, scenario also there is a nominal stress so that is the human stress and the human stress also can be talked at two levels one is psychological uh, and physiological level. so psychological means suppose if we uh, if we uh, have 10 minutes uh, for a job uh, and uh, we have to do the job in 2 minutes no no uh stress or minimal stress will be there but if you if we take 2 minutes uh, for a job in a systematic manner and if you are given only 3 minutes or 2.5 minutes then it be it becomes a source of stress you know mental stress then similarly workload what kind of workload or what kind of fatigue you have over a period of time let's say one person has worked uh, uh, one round the clock shift second round the clock shift he will have some fatigue okay and there the chances of error reduces main main machine interface if the main machine interface is uh, good like audio visuals are there yes it will draw your attention but if we have a diagnostic computerized system then it will be a backup to our analysis which we which we are doing it so they are called operator advisory system then procedural instruction certain scenarios evolving in the plant let us say class 4 power failure or you know a loss of offset power then uh, what are the procedures they have to follow so if they are there they are coming in a sequence and then operator is convinced that okay he has checked up with the system which doesn't get to computers do not get affected by the transients or any phenomena ha happening in time domain whatever knowledge has been imparted to computers they will uh, the rules will uh, be fired in that sequence and the chances are error but human cognitive capability during stressful time uh, reduces significantly and decision making sometimes it becomes a problem so that's why the human reliability becomes very important um, then the for phys physiological factors are like fatigue pain hunger thirst temperature and humidity in a in a environment where there is a lot of humidity and temperature definitely the focus and attention will not be all that good then we have ground ground benign environment control room where temperature is 22 degree centigrade humidity is 55% so this is called ground benign temperature and a person feels comfortable and he is able to do a better job or even the uh, scenario uh, let us say we have to open a wall in the open uh, area and there is a rainy season uh, if if it is a normal season lot of sun and all then so good but if it is rainy season then our attention is diverted or extreme snow condition so these are the things they affect and that is a part of human error uh, human reliability taxonomy and especially it is uh, uh, there for the third actually so now how hra modeling uh, is uh, done in uh, pra uh, when we do pra there is intuitive uh, areas whether the human error is coming on recovery le level or is a safety action 
that is a part of the event tree, then it becomes a part of excellent sequence. If it is in a fault tree, that uh, the, uh, the one, uh, uh, one component has failed and human inter uh, intervention is required to start the standby equipment, then it is a human reliability component at the fault tree level also it is. And there are uh, classification, pre-initiating event, post-initiating event, then recovery error, then error for correction, and if that goes wrong, then so pre-initiator is one where some action was done, some calibration was done on instrument and setting was done. And when this uh, phenomena, uh, uh, actual transient comes, uh, that desired action is not taking place. That means that fault remained passive for such a long time. And it got precipitated only when uh, one situation uh, brought in a particular scenario. Then the, the fault itself can generate an initiating event some breakers to, uh, failed uh, while maintaining maintenance and then th this becomes an initiating event for power supply and then post initiating event um, uh, there is some sa safety action which form part of the inventory and this action is one thing uh, then there is another action which is a recovery action uh, if something situation got worsened and then we have to do mitigation measures then these recovery actions are coming in and there are some action which is not done. That itself uh, is a, uh, in post scenario. So there are five classes, uh, pre-initiator, initiator, post-initiator, post and post-initiator have type one, type two, type three. So total we have five type of uh, action, human action, which can, uh, which can, um, which is to be treated in human reliability analysis. Now, uh, once we understand that some, uh, 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 some treatment is required for human drive analysis, then there is a flow chart in, uh, in THERP approach. Uh, first, we have to problem definition. If I have to say, this is the most important and most uh, crucial task in human reliability analysis. If our problem definition is not clear, then the analysis will not be clear and it requires a lot of debate, discussion and all that. So once you do that, then the second step is task. What, what is the criticality of the task? Is, is it a part of accident sequence uh, evaluation program or is it some uh, starting a redundant failed system or re uh, repairing as a small repair and then finally a task analysis follows. So once you come to the task analysis, uh, we have a detailed modeling is required. Ki what is this task? Let's say um, we have human error in starting a diesel generator during a scenario, power failure scenario. And we are not able to, the human is not able to start it. Then what are the causes which are stopping, which trips, alarms, and if the, those trips and alarms are there, what is the reason for that? A complete detailed analysis and review is required. Then identification, ki why, what is the human error? What kind of human error it is? Uh, uh, it, it was there. It was that uh, somebody uh, didn't have knowledge of that, you know, uh, diesel generator should not have been stopped or it should have been stopped. If it is not stopped, why it is not stopped? Why? So all those reasons have to be identified because the uh, human tries to bring the plant to a normal level, but the error sometimes becomes, uh, you know, uh, restrain uh, the action actually. So then finally, everything has been understood. So a graphical representation has to be done, either in the fault tree, event tree, or even some uh, ergonomics le at level, uh, how this error can happen, what are the possibilities. And then uh, there are so many candidate component. We have to do screening because for everything human reliability analysis, it is a very complex exercise. So uh, if we have to some criteria, quantitative uh, criteria, 10 to minus 3, 10 to minus 4, or some qualitative criteria for detail, because quantification is a very involved exercise. And then once the quantification has been done, now impact assessment, it is called sensitivity analysis, uh, has to, can be done. Then um, what are the mechanism for error red reduction and quality assurance program and documentation. And from here we, we have available performance indicator which comes into the action here. Uh, error recovery mechanism which are uh, here and feed forward how the task analysis and how it uh, it goes into the loop and we always have a error reduction uh, continuous 
quality assurance uh, and go on uh, tuning the uh, whole exercise in a manner that human error is reduced. Now there is one very important aspect of uh, human uh, reliability analysis that is uh, we have time available, the stress levels, uh, you know, uh, the time available uh, and uh, uh, stresses, but this is, these are the stress level. So what we are trying to say here is the medium stress level is uh, good for task performance, effectiveness of the task. So the, uh, we th sometimes feel that lowest stress uh, uh, is good. No, uh, some stress level should be there and this has come out in from lab environment that minimum stress, this is called optimum stress for a good task. It's simple example is when we go for exam, there is a, uh, there is a uh, stress, but uh, at particular stress level only we perform better, our memory works better and all that. After that, the effectiveness of the task comes down. So every reliable, human reliability engineer should know that this curve is, uh, uh, should be, uh, should be uh, known and should be considered while taking the decision. Now, uh, as I said, uh, THERP is a very, very uh, elaborate approach, very comprehensive approach. It is comprehensive to the extent that only experts are, can, do, uh, can uh, do human reliability modeling. So that is a limitation also, but that brings, uh, brings out qualitative and accurate input also. So this is a cover page of the THERP and it is available in open domain. So that means if somebody wants to become a human reliability engineer, this particular reference is available. There are many, uh, but then this is the one with uh, 650 plus pages and all. If you have done THERP, then you can do, uh, you are on track into human reliability. It is something like this. Now, what is the purpose? Purpose was for of the THERP was to do human reliability analysis good, but as part of uh, probabilistic risk assessment and in a focused way for nuclear power plant. So this was in short was the purpose of the THERP with these objectives THERP was designed. Um, detailing of the events are concerned uh, actually in a broad way this THERP actually uh, is a lookup table type approach. Um, study your job the way I have seen you in the chart last uh, previous slide and um, then uh, have lookup table, uh, appropriate lookup look table, performance shaping factor. So, um, uh, but then that also requires an exp expertise, what is what to look and where to look, uh, it's a very complex thing, but it is very complex, comprehens uh, comprehensive detailing has been there in the third. Uh, scope in terms of applicability, yes, nuclear power plant and PRA, but it is there for safety improvements uh, uh, in design and operation also as a end objective, uh, whether it is at qualitative level or at quantitative level. The power of this approach, uh, I would say, uh, yeah, as the uh, handbook itself brings out, it has got some limitation uh, in terms of, uh, you know, data and all that, because whatever best was available, it was done. But the power is, uh, the claim is that it gives realistic assessment of the human reliability and that is something would have come out on many exercises. Uh, that's why the developers are able are making the claim even I, I would feel he, yes. Uh, only my point was that the uncertainty uh, is on higher side and uh, so, so we have to see uh, how far because uh, these uh, tables were developed for certain uh, lab environment, uh, expert opinion and all. So what is applicable to my system, uh, the my ecosystem, uh, it may not show the desired result. So that question always remains with any techn technique that we develop. Then human performance model is one of the very uh, detail uh, is there, there in the handbook. Uh, uh, human behavior, the uh, one thing is, it has got a human model, which we'll see uh, in this after this slide, and uh, it has got different uh, behavior it can capture actually, and in in different scenario. scenario. So, uh, since so much of applicability or you know uh, options that are being given over here, uh, it it makes uh, human performance model more 
robust actually you know and that's why they are able to claim that is developers they are able to claim it gives a realistic assessment of the probability of failure on you and the source for this is uh, swan and gutman uh, handbook of human reliability probably if you type you can get it actually it is called nureg cr1 uh, 12c8 all usrc usnrc documents are about like this only okay so now the the uh, in cqb what we are talking about the human model yes there is a formal human model here also and this was developed in 1983 Uh, but if you see its structure is like uh, hardware and it is being called human component also uh, and be because the objective was very simple it was basically for nuclear power plant um, and uh, for the ecosystem was targeted one actually so what is what what it means here is there is input there is output and there are processing elements so input is the element a Uh, sensory or visual input um, you know visual uh, in control room scenario there is a trip and alarms and all that so uh, the other one thing then internal process are filtering organizing and recognizing uh, that comes in the b here um, this has got a uh, repo with this one also then c is cognitive activities the task processing and uh, perceived information uh, and developing a perception what is to be done uh, and what decision making has to be and then finally there is a uh, output response it could be no action use of hand and foot other parts control uh, some functions on the, on the console or something and are uh, command passing on some command so this is captured in uh, block d over here and then final external results human machine interface correct or incorrect human input to system that might so what we have reflected onto the system uh, according to the uh, whether it is opening of wall closing of wall taking some readings so that will be uh, affected okay um, but here human is in a open loop uh, automatic like it is it has it can be distinguished from automation so uh, based on so many activities processing and all then feedback internal and external feedback loop uh, the loops are like this so here Uh, external loop loop is there one more internal loop is there in the human itself so the response will keep changing based on the uh, internal processing this is external processing and uh, we can review this and uh, new inputs and all and that will modify our result so this is the human model and uh, so given the fact that it was developed in 1983 or even before that uh, it is a it is a uh, model which serve the purpose for its applicability now uh, in uh, tharp there is very interesting it is called hra inventory is like we know the inventory which has which is used for uh, accident sequence modeling but here this is basically a, any procedure has got many task and if you have to model uh, a task then how uh, we can model the task okay now now task can be in series or in parallel okay be before we coming to that what what is this approach each it is giving the um, uh, uh, some basic characteristic of this uh, uh, hra inventory each node uh, in the uh, has got so a small a is success and capital a is a failure and task is characterized by uh, inverted comma so these are the uh, uh, you can say uh, hra or tharp parlance that we are using so success small letters a or b is success uh, capital b is a uh, second task that means sequence of the task has already been determined a and b there are two tasks and then capital letter is probability of failure now so so if the uh, the task is start here and if we have a a means success side we have moved this is failure there are only two binary event success uh, sorry uh, uh, success and failure so if success is there then what is the situation of b b is also success that means we have a uh, success over here okay uh, that we are talking about series task but if for the parallel systems uh, if there is a b here which is failure then it is a failure so you we can see this diagram for series and parallel system and we can have an they use this input over here uh, and then so how to read b given a probability of task b given a 
that is probability of task give a success and give, given a success. So like that we have read and probably we can form, uh, so series, this is the uh, success, these are all failures. Uh, in parallel thing, these are all success because one of the component is operating. So and the rest is failure. And finally we, give, we make statement for series system and parallel system. So this is a very elegant approach for uh, for characterizing human action and uh, and their sequences actually. Now, um, uh, sometimes we have to say between task dependency level. So what is the dependency? Dependency is P0 is that uh, uh, if it is there is dependency is zero, then it is independent task. So it is it is characterized by P0. But if there is a low dependency, then this formulation probably this has been uh, generated uh, on the simulator experiment. So we can state, uh, suppose if, if, some, uh, if we determine in our system, there is a dependency level 0, low, moderate, high. So we can, uh, complete dependency means 1. So it's very simple, we have to use this model and this uh, factor 26, 19, they have been like, you know, we have to use it like a black box. But uh, it, since it comes from a lot of experiments, uh, till we have something better, these are the, uh, you know, fallback arrangement and we have to use this one actually. Now, uh, the, the HCR that next we will discuss and THERP, they have this, uh, they are characterized by these uh, curves, they are called THERP curves, you know. So then situation and anomalies. So basically it is meant for diagnostic uh, uh, within a time t, what is the probability that the diagnostics will be correct. These curves have been developed. We have the median value, joint probability, uh, upper bound and lower bound. And uh, then we have uh, time, time t in minutes. So suppose if time t in minutes, one is their failure diagnostic time, uh, the failure probability will be 1. But as the time available is increases, the probability of failure goes on reducing. And these are something, uh, this is taken as a reference for human reliability modeling in various field actually. Now, um, the, so because I had uh, mentioned that uh, the ETHARP is a heavily uh, lookup table based approach. Uh, so here, uh, we have some human probability and this can be taken directly uh, when we do human reliability analysis. Uh, like say, uh, task is carrying out plan policy of scheduled task and that is task has been scheduled and periodic test maintenance, the probability will be 0 0.01, that means 1, 1 in 100. And the error factor, that is uncertainty, will be 5. You can imagine 5 is, 3 and 5 is acceptable, but when you have uncertainty, abnormal operating condition, the uncertainty is very high, that means confidence in this data is less. It could be 10 multiplied or 10 divided, you know, in simple words, okay. Then use of wall slip, written procedures the error rate is because a lot of data must be available so error rate. So these are the typical values there are hundreds of the tables that are there in THERP and we have to use based on the uh, analysis what we are doing. Okay. So now uh, we have seen the broad feature of THERP and probably with this input uh, uh, one can start referring THERP and start doing uh, so what should be ready with you is a task that you want to analyze and then map it on third data and models and uh, curves and try to arrive at human reliability probability. So uh, of course it is a voluminous job but it can be done and as, as it has been claimed by the handbook itself, it, it gives a reasonably good prediction. THERP has been designed in for PRA application that we have saw, saw just now. Um, it was launched in 1983, lot of time has passed and uh, a new approach uh, this factor itself uh, calls for a new approach because a lot of changes in technologies, uh, the human uh, cognitive uh, processes. So, uh, um, most elaborate uh, technique in the nuclear industry, yes it can. And the data and PSF to some extent make the approach a black box approach. Because we don't know the science, the experiment, the data, the statistics. So, the analyst uses this value but the, he don't know how it has been arrived. So basically it is a black box type of approach to some extent of course. And of course it meets the common uh, perception of various aspects, it does meet. But still the experience has been that uh, 
sometimes it is overestimating because uh, yeah in at, at times i have noticed that many things are overestimated and, uh, and of course conservative is one of the principle in uh, deterministic analysis so it, that is almost in line actually so with this we uh, conclude our discussion on uh, technique for human error rate prediction developed by uh, usnrc so thank you very much